Hey everyone, I'm Srini Rao. I'm the co-founder of NotionEssentials.com and today what I'm going to be going over is how to create a personal workflow inside of Notion. So let's hop into Notion real quick. So when you first log into Notion, it can seem a, a bit overwhelming because of the fact that you basically have um, sort of a, a blank slate to work with. In this case, you can kind of see I have projects in my existing workspace for the projects that I'm currently working on. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically just start with a blank page and we're going to go from there. So basically you can see here that I have a page titled Building a Personal Workflow. And because of the fact that when you first open up Notion it's a blank page, it can seem really overwhelming. If you don't have any sort of plan as to what you're going to do with it, it can seem like you have this really powerful tool that you have no idea what to do with. So in this case what we're going to do just for the sake of an example, is we're going to build a personal workflow for somebody who has a podcast. Now, for the sake of this podcast, we're going to have three core elements. We're going to have an editorial calendar, which is going to have all our content for that podcast. We're going to have a reading list, which is basically for anybody who interviews authors, or if you have books or reference material that you want to reference throughout that podcast, we're going to create that. And then we're also going to create a list of tasks that are related to that podcast. So let's get started with the editorial calendar. But before we do that, let me show you one of the basic building blocks that is really kind of central to Notion, and that is this whole idea of blocks. Blocks are basically like Lego blocks, except in digital form. And as you can see here, you have different kinds of blocks. You have pages, you have text, you have headings. Settings, you have bulleted lists, numbers lists, quotes, whatever it is you want to do. That's one of the things that makes Notion so powerful is the fact that it is modular and you can actually build in all these blocks and rearrange them in any way that you want. So for the sake of our example here, uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a page and we're going to title it Editorial Calendar. Now the nice thing is that Notion actually already has some templates built in that you can use uh, if you want to create an editorial calendar. But in our case, let's go ahead and create this table from scratch rather than using their existing editorial calendar. We're just going to create a simple inline table. And here we're going to say this is the name of the guest slash episode. Uh, then we're going to give it something simple, which is like a status. So let's go ahead and do that. As you can see here, um, each one of the fields inside of a table actually has some different things. You can actually mark it as a file. You can act have it be sort of a multi-select or a checkbox. So in this case what we're going to do is we're going to give it a status and we're going to say you know idea, um, another one is scheduled, and then another one is booked, and then another one is recorded. So now any one of the podcasts that we record we're going to know exactly what the status is of that podcast. The other thing that we can do is we can actually go ahead and we can add in a calendar as well. So we're going to say okay this is going to be the interview date, for example, whatever date you happen to have the interview scheduled, if it's an interview or whatever you know date that the podcast is going to be recorded. So let's just call it the recording date and we're going to go ahead and put that in there. And then, um, so we basically have a very simple calendar here for a podcast. We have a guest name, we have a status, we have what date it's going to be recorded. So let's just put some examples in here uh, just for fun. You know, we'll say Oprah is one of our upcoming guests. And then Howard Stern. So you can see here we have a very eclectic guest list. Seth Godin, Howard Stern, and Oprah Winfrey. A very weird podcast, as you can see. Um, now, let's say that, you know, one of these is only an idea. One of these is scheduled. The nice thing is that you can actually filter. So let's say that we want to filter and actually say, okay, show me um, only the episodes where the status is actually scheduled. You can see then we actually filter it down to Oprah because she's the only one who's actually scheduled. Now we can remove these filters and we can actually look at this calendar in a different number, you know, a different number of ways too. So one of my preferred ways of doing this is just by having this task list um, or this view right here which shows it as a table, but you can actually view it as a calendar as well. So for example, let's say that you created a calendar view, then you'd basically see the same view here. Um, and you can see you know, which dates you actually have stuff on. Um, again, we can basically go back and we can filter things, but you basically have an editorial calendar that shows you. Um, I, like I said, tend to prefer the default view. Um, we can also do Kanban boards if we want as another way of viewing this. But let's say that we go ahead and we put in different recording dates here for our various uh, guests. And then you know, we have a different status you know, in this case. So let's, for example, mark two of these as booked, one of these is scheduled. Um, and then, you know, let's just say, uh, 
George Bush as our other guest and his podcast has already been recorded and we recorded on May 11th. So now you can see here that we basically are marking each one of these with a particular status and you have a very simple editorial calendar for your podcast. Uh, the nice thing is when you use filters, uh, you can permanently add a filter. So for example, the only thing, let's say that you only want to see stuff that's either um, been booked or scheduled and we want to get rid of anything that is recorded so that way it's not in our view and we don't have to worry about it, we could add a filter and we could say, okay, make sure the status is uh, not recorded and then it will basically get rid of anybody who's not recorded and we'll only see the guests that are now booked or scheduled. So that's a basic editorial calendar uh, for a podcast. Now, let's get into the other pieces of this. So as I was saying, another thing that you can do is you can actually create a reading list. So for example, let's say every one of those people, which coincidentally each one of those people actually does have a book, let's say that we wanted to read all of their books. Well, we can actually create a reading list for this podcast. And one of the nice things is Notion actually has a lot of pre-built templates and they have a really good one for a reading list, which is already pre-built. And what you'll see here is that you can actually use this template and you can basically have, you know, books, articles, uh, you know, whatever it is. Again, you have different ways that you can view this as well. Um, you can say, go to all, and you can see here that they have a table. So they actually, you know, include some stuff here about your reading list. This you can actually get rid of. Uh, the nice thing is that, as I said, you can have blocks inside of Notion. And now you have this reading list where you have the name, you can even categorize it by type, you can, you know, have a score, but let's, you know, say that we don't care about having a score, we can get rid of that, then we actually can have an author, um, a publisher. So this is an incredibly detailed reading list, but let's just, for example, say that we wanted to create, you know, um, either that or a book, we can see here there's an article here, and we can actually get the article using the Notion Web Clipper and get all of the content from that article. One of the other things that's really nice is that you can actually go in here and you can highlight stuff and you can bold it and you can do all sorts of stuff and you can modify um, text, you can even comment on it and collaborate with other people. So one of the really good uses of a reading list for me personally is to document the books that I read. So you know, many people underline books, they highlight them, but then they end up forgetting about the books. So I think that books are actually one of the best ways to create a reading list. Um, you don't necessarily have to do a reading list for all these different things, but you can actually create a list, uh, a media list for all the types of content that you consume. And again, you have the capability to filter. So for example, let's say that we wanted to filter by status, then we would basically be able to filter everything that we're ready to start. Or let's say that you wanted to filter by type and say, okay, show me, um, the only things I want to see now are where the type is an article and then all the things that are not articles would go away. So basically, you, you know, that's one component of this editorial calendar. Now, finally, what we're going to do for this personal workflow is we're going to create a simple task list. So as you can see here, I outlined, you know, four different things. There's a couple of different ways that you can do a task list. So let's just, you know, create another page uh, and we'll call this our task list. So pages are really kind of a great way to create the different building blocks for the different components of a project that you want to work on. Now, there are a couple of different ways you can do this. As I said, we can do a simple task list uh, just by doing a to-do list. I don't recommend that because of the fact that it's a bit harder to track. It's a bit harder to give everything a status. Um, it just kind of makes it a mess. Um, it's nice because you can see everything, but it's not the cleanest way to do it. So let's go ahead and you know look at what our options are. I think again, we'll create a simple table that allows us to have uh, a task list. So let's go ahead and create an inline table. And again, basically what we're going to do is we're going to call this the task name and we're going to basically say, okay, you know what? This is the task name. This is the due date. And again, when you change it to a date, you want to go here and you want to change this to a date so that it shows up as a date. Then we're going to uh, give that task a status. and rename that as status. And then there are a couple of different ways. This is really, you know, something that is great is you can personalize this based on, you know, however you work. So for example, you could have something that is either next up. These are some of the default things that Notion comes in with their templates uh, in progress or completed. It just really depends how many phases you have inside of a particular workflow. So 
as you can see here, the other thing that's really nice is it actually color codes these so that you can see them by color if you were to do a Kanban board or anything like that. Now let's say that you're working with somebody on your team, you can actually assign that task to a person. So let's go ahead and put a person there and you know we'll call this assignee. And in this case, we can say, you know, upload this video to Notion. And what I'll do here is I'll go ahead and I will assign this to our other co-founder, Tim Wolf. And you can see here that now he's been assigned this task of uploading this video to Notion. I need to know how to spell Notion, obviously. But uh, so basically what you're seeing now is a very simple workflow for a podcast built inside of Notion. And you can really just do this with just about any project that you want to work on. So in this case, we just took something as simple as a podcast. We said, okay, these are the components of a podcast, an editorial calendar, a reading list, and a task list. And we built pages for each one of them. And then we basically put in blocks inside each page to uh, allow us to, to basically manage this workflow. So again, this can get a lot more detailed. You can make it much more complicated. You can make it much more personalized. And... I think I would encourage all of you to do is to leave us uh, any questions that you have in the comments below uh, or visit notionessentials.com uh, and sign up for a free consultation with us. We'll basically do a workflow audit for you and you'll get a free customized workflow audit that you can actually go and implement when you're setting up Notion for one of your own projects. Now, keep in mind, I did this for a podcast, but this is something that you can use for just about any creative project. I've used it to write books. I've used it to do um, videos. There's literally not a single creative project that you can't do using this exact framework. So again, visit notionessentials.com. Leave us questions or comments below in the video, and we'll also include links um, in the info area here on this video.